What's up guys? I'm Sonny the Badger from the Badgers and the Biker Lifestyle on Facebook and the Badgers right here on YouTube. If it is your first time to our channel, welcome to our channel. And if you've been here before, welcome back to our channel. So on this week's episode of Fat Boy Friday, we're going to cover five more things that I think you should add to your bike if you're going to go touring on your fat boy. Let's get into it. All right, guys, so if you missed it before, I did a video, five things you need to put on your bike before going touring on your fat boy. Um, it was a popular video, uh, but that was only five things. So I've got five more things that um, I would definitely add to your bike if you're going to go touring across country on your fat boy. A little bit about me, I have put about 150,000 miles total on my different fat boys here. Uh, I've traveled all over the country. In fact, last year we went through 22 states and 13,000 miles, and that was just one trip. So, uh, of course, a lot of people always ask, well, why don't you just buy a bagger? Uh, why don't you buy a touring bike? Because um, I don't want a touring bike. I love my fat boys. So I just take my fat boys and adapt them to be... Um, better equipped to go long distance riding. So my silver bike back here um, has the most miles on it. It's got like 115,000 on it. It's the one I take everywhere. And it's the one that I have put all the modifications on. Um, one of the things I love about the Fat Boy is I can take it from this, which is bare bones straight from the factory stock um, to ready to tour in about 15, 20 minutes. Um, I can slap the bags on it, I can put the backrest on it, I can put the windshield on it, um, and just like that, I've got, you know, a touring bike. So that's one of the things I love about them, is they're just so versatile that um, I can just hop on it and cruise around town. I can hop on it and cruise cross country. Um, doesn't matter, they work for both. So five more things I added to my bike to make it more friendly for cross country. So. The number one thing was I put a cup holder on it. Hi guys, I know you don't need a cup holder. I'm, I know through this video, I'm gonna hear a lot of people be like, I don't need that. And you don't need that on a motorcycle. And why would you want that on a motorcycle? Because guys, I'm talking about traveling 10, 12, 14 hour days. Um, and it's nice to take a freaking drink. Not to mention in the heat of summer, you wanna stay hydrated. Um, so that you can keep riding, right? So the last thing you wanna do is get to your destination and be dehydrated, wore out, and then you know you gotta get up and do it again the next day. So staying hydrated um, is hugely important. Um, and a quick, easy way to do that is to have a cup holder on your bike. Um, I also use like a Yeti cup um, because it'll hold ice pretty much all day. So I fill it up with ice, I fill it up with drink, and every gas stop, I refill it up with drink. Um, or I just fill it up with ice and I carry a drink with me in my bag so that I can just refill along the road. But it's very important to stay hydrated. Cup holders are pretty cheap. I'll put a link to the one I use down below. You can get them in all ranges, all sizes. All right, number two is a cell phone holder. Now guys, um, I know a lot of you have probably heard that, you know, if you don't get the right cell phone holder, um, your camera will get messed up on the new iPhones um, from the vibration and so on and so forth. So we've had this happen to us once. It happened to Mama Badger and she had a different phone holder. So um, the phone holder she had was like this. And this phone holder, as you can see, is flat and it's on the handlebars. And I think that it just gets more vibration on the handlebars and that's what messed her camera up. So we got a new camera on hers and then we put a phone holder like the one I have. And guys, I don't buy the big expensive phone holders. Um, in fact, I buy two pieces. So I buy the piece that holds the phone and then I buy the piece that actually bolts to the bike. And the reason I do that is if I need to put a camera or something else up, I can unscrew the piece for my phone and I can use it for multiple things. So I actually use two pieces. I use the actual bracket and then the actual phone holder. So it's more versatile for me that way. Um, and like I said, the phone holders and all, I'll put a link to them below. I don't spend very much at all on those. Um, they're pretty cheap to get off of Amazon and they work great for me. Um, so, you know, to each their own. They've got phone holders that are $100 that will, you know, charge your phone once it touches it. And 
I don't, I don't do any of that. Um, although, uh, that takes me right into the number three thing you want to add. I actually have a dual USB port underneath my seat, um, which you'll see here. But anyway, it runs directly to the battery um, and it has two USBs. One USB runs up and plugs into my phone. And then I have a spare USB for anything else that I might need to charge. Um, a lot of you guys know I will run a Senna headset. Um, after 10, 12 hours of you know being on comms and all, those will run dead. So sometimes I'm not finished riding and it's going dead. So I'll plug that into my USB. It's just handy to have a couple USBs on your bike because you can pretty much charge anything from those USBs. Uh, but I pretty much leave my phone plugged in 99% of the time uh, because I use my phone for navigation. Um, I use my phone for phone calls. I also use my phone as my radio um, hooked into my Senna within my helmet. So I can pretty much do everything you can do on a bagger um, except blast the person next to me um, out because all my music and everything stays contained in my helmet. Um, that's the big difference between the two. Otherwise I can do pretty much everything the baggers can do just within my own helmet and I'll keep it all to myself. I don't share it with everybody. <laughs> all right, guys, the number four thing, it's a throttle lock. Now, most of these bikes come with a little screw um, underneath the throttle. Guys, for me that, I mean, it works, but it's just such a pain to tighten it down and then try to loosen it up, especially if you need to do it in a hurry. So I actually put a throttle lock on mine. Um, as you can see in the video here, it's really easy to install. They're about 35 bucks. I've got a video that I'll link here and I'll link down below of me actually installing it. Pretty simple install and it's just a flip of a lever. So you flip it down to lock your throttle and you flip it up to unlock your throttle. So super easy to use. Uh, the other thing that's nice is, although it holds your throttle, if you were to take it and rip the throttle back um, because you forgot how to un unlatch it, um, it won't stop you from moving your throttle. So that's a nice little feature because uh, you just never know, right? I know the first couple times I used it, you know, you're not used to it being on there. So um, I just crank the throttle back. But um, super handy, especially when you're riding all day, just to give that right hand a break. Uh, because you know, the touring bikes, they come with cruise control. Uh, this does not have cruise control. It will not adjust your speed as you're going up and down hills. It is literally just a throttle lock. So you put the throttle where you want it, you clamp it down, it holds that throttle in position while you shake your hand, take a break, whatever that may look like. But guys, when you're traveling a lot of miles every day, it is super handy um, to have right there on your hand grip. Just flip it on, flip it off, um, and give yourself a little bit of a break. All right, guys. So last but not least, number five. Um, so on my windshield, I have put three bags um, that mount right to my windshield. And guys, those are the handiest thing to have. Because as you're traveling down the road, sometimes you just need to get the stuff. Um, one thing I keep in there is toll money. Like when I'm going through toll roads um, and I need to get to cash real easy, um, I keep toll money in one of the pockets. Uh, I keep my garage door openers there. I keep my clear glasses there so that they're easily accessible. Um, but guys, that's got to be one of the handiest extra things that I've put on my bike. Just because there are some times when you need to get to things quickly, easily, and uh, it's just convenient to be right there. They're inexpensive. In fact, this one was actually given to me. It wasn't even for my bike. But I will say this, because I get these questions all the time. Um, will this seat fix my fit my bike? Um, will this windshield, will this whatever fit my bike? Guys, with a little bit of ingenuity, about any part will fit um, on any bike. Uh, I mean, that's what bike building is, right? So um, you just have to get creative. So this one didn't actually fit my bike. So I took and drilled holes in it, um, my own holes, and guess what? It fits perfect. Um, it just took me measuring out the holes for what I, the system and setup I had, um, and then just a, a drill and a drill bit, right? Marked them, drilled them, and it's worked great for years. 
So that would be the one thing I would say in closing here, guys. So all of these things that I'm telling you about are tried and true. I have ridden for years with them, um, hundreds of thousands of miles. And these aren't things that I just bought and threw on my bike and said, you know what, I'm gonna do a review on this because, well, you know, maybe somebody will buy one. These have been used for years, so I know they work, um, or I wouldn't tell you uh, that, I, you know, that I recommend these. So guys, definitely check out some of these things if you're planning on going cross country on your Harley Davidson Fat Boy. If you're not going cross country on your Harley Davidson Fat Boy, then you can leave it stock like this and cool, right? Because honestly, when the bike's all dressed up for touring, it's not nearly as cool as it looks straight from the factory. And you know, I see people say that all the time. Um, it's just whatever you're gonna use your bike for. If you're gonna use it to putt around town, that's perfect. If you're gonna use it to go cross country, then you're probably gonna wanna modify a few things so that it's more comfortable. But whatever you wanna do, guys, it's your bike. Make it whatever you want, do whatever you want with it, but just know that you do not have to buy a touring bike to go touring. You can buy whatever you want, whatever you're comfortable on, do a few mods, and bam, you're touring. Some people tour with them just like that. Those guys are more badass than I am. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Um, please hit that subscribe button, share it with your friends, Give us a thumbs up, thumbs down, leave us your comments, we answer them all. And remember guys, it's not about the destination, it's all about the ride. See ya.